Hi there. Welcome to another ITV special edition where we are creating a community dialogue series as an opportunity to grow and bring the Caribbean and Indian community together. Today we will be discussing pageantry and how the cultural mindset might view it as just another beauty pageant. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest with us here today in the ITV studio. Uh, none other than Rakaya Boyer, um, who is Guyana's 2013 Miss World pageantry representative for Guyana. Rakaya also um, represented Guyana in the Miss Universe pageant. And as I indicated earlier, we're, we're discussing um, Rakaya's um, journey to Indonesia in a few days. And for us viewers here to look at how looking, pa looking at pageantry beyond um, the beauty. So Rakaya, welcome to ITV. Hi. And thank you for joining us here. Now, you were in the Miss Universe pageant in 2012, correct? In yes, December. that's correct. Now, and then you were selected for the Miss World. Why Miss World now? Why is that a platform for you now? Well, the Miss World pageant is a pageant that I participated in in Guyana before I participated for the Miss Universe pageant in Guyana as well. The Miss World pageant is a pioneer for change, and I've been doing a lot of advocacy work, and it's about beauty with a purpose and trying to be the change you want to see in the world. So that just seemed like the perfect platform for me to get involved with because the Miss World pageant isn't just about being a pretty face or walking the stage in the, on the runway or just you know smiling and that, that sort of thing. It's more about being purposeful and having a cause and being able to see that cause from the beginning to the end and that lends itself as a, as a platform for young women that are trying to do something with themselves and be the change they want to see in the world. All right, Julia Morley is the um Miss World chairperson, correct? Yes, she is. Now, um, I was taking a look at some of the stuff online about the competition, and you mentioned something earlier about beauty with a purpose. And I think it's important for our viewers to understand what exactly beauty with a purpose is. Can you expand on that a little bit and what your platform is on the beauty with a purpose? Well, Ms. Julia Morley is the, the CEO of the Miss World pageant, and that is the one thing that basically differentiates Miss World from any other pageant in the world. The Beauty with a Purpose cause is a cause whereby you have fundraising for disadvantaged children around the world, children that need help. They, they're countries that children do not have access to good water, to good food, to educational facilities and these things. So. Miss Julia Murley has been a pioneer for, to create that avenue whereby fun, funds can be raised to assist those children globally. In terms of my charity, My Beauty with a Purpose cause, I've uh, started a campaign, not today, but a few years ago, whereby we advocate for issues against domestic violence and bullying as of recent. Now, you said domestic violence and bullying. How did you tie those two together? Well, domestic violence, also known as gender-based violence, is, is a, a form of abuse. And bullying has many forms. It comes in many forms. And domestic violence is one of those forms where the person that is trying to be the person that's the bullying, the bullier, they, they have different things that would have affected their mental psyche, that affects their psychology, and that lends them to become the perpetrator or the person that abuses maybe their wife, maybe their children. So that's how they find that connection with each other. So I understand that um, because being a part of CADVA myself, you um, have been their ambassador for change with domestic violence and the bullying campaign. So tell us about um, that journey because you went from Guyana to Trinidad um, and then here to the U.S. now before you um, complete your journey into in Indonesia. How was that um, on, the, on that campaign? Okay, well, for me, well, like you mentioned, I'm an ambassador. I'm working with the Caribbean American Domestic Violence Awareness Group, and being able to be within that organization has been a learning experience. As of recent, our country has been undergoing a lot of issues as it relates to gender-based violence, domestic violence, and the true awareness we've been advocating via meeting with groups in Trinidad, 
both in Trinidad and Guyana. We started off in Guyana whereby we did outreach with schools and we had very, very, very informative interactive sessions with school children there. And we were able to reach out to children, have children come out and speak about their challenges, their issues, their views and what bullying is and how they see domestic violence in ways that we can help minimize the issue both in Guyana, in Trinidad, and in our wider Caribbean. So CADVA has lended itself as that platform, and CADVA, as you hear, as the, the name would speak for itself, it's about a Caribbean effort um, as much as it's giving me the platform for, from a Guyana perspective, but it's also about uniting forces with all of our Caribbean countries and coming together as one to awareness, building that awareness, that advocacy to education. That's the first step. And from there, we take it to various places. We get to reach into the rural communities, uh, the urban cities, and all of these people. We come together as one, build the awareness, and do something about change when it comes to bullying and domestic violence. That's great. Now, um, I came across an interview you did with the um, Indonesian um, pageantry, I believe. Which one of the interviews? The, um, there's one oh, of them. Okay. I don't remember which one, but one of the questions, uh, the interview um, that I saw based on the questions, I thought you did really well. Okay. Um, it was an online, I saw the questions online, but I wanted our viewers, our Caribbean and Indian viewers, to hear some of the stuff to understand who Rakaya Boyer is. Um, and one of the things that fascinated me, because you're an Afro-Guyanese, and um, uh, from, from what I, one of the questions was, from all the 62 past Miss World winners, which one was your favorite winner and why? And I'm smiling because you sort of picked one of my favorites. Um, and I'd like for you to tell our audience, our viewers, why um, uh, you selected this person and, and how do you view that? Well, to begin with, I am not au fait with all of the winners, but, and, but I applaud all of their efforts. But the one person that did stick out to me a bit was Miss Ashwarya Rai. And that was because she personified not just an outward beauty, but an inner beauty. And her humility, her, humility, her advocacy work is something that I find very inspirational. She, during her reign, she really reached out to a worldwide audience through her advocacy work. And it just goes to show that being a Miss World or have, being an ambassador for change you, it's not just about what you look like. It's a lot of work that goes on in the inside. She pretty much represented that person that I am aspiring to become as a future Miss World contender and hopefully Miss World. But apart from Miss Ashwarya Rai, who, by the way, I look at all, her, all of her Bollywood films because I think she's an amazing actress. She's done a lot for the Bollywood industry. And outside of her, I would have been proud to say if that had happened, but Ms. Shakira Bash is also an inspiration, and she has basically been the one that set the tone for Guyana's ambassadors like myself to come out and try to uh, basically acquire the Miss World title. She basically was the, f the highest rated Guyanese to place in the Miss World with third runner-up, and she's been successful ever since. She's as well as an inspiration to me, just like Miss Ashwarya Rai. But like I mentioned, all of the queens, all of the previous Miss World queens, they, they were there for a cause. They, had a, they, were, they are beauty with a purpose. So I applaud all of their efforts, and I commend them for a job well done because they all advocated for change, and that's the most important thing when you're going forward. You need to make a positive and lasting impact on those that you're trying to inspire, and I think they've done a tremendous job with that. Um, well, let me ask you this. If, let's say if you were to win this pageant and you're representing Guyana, now what would you do with that platform? The thing is, the Miss World pageant the plat because they already have a foundation whereby they're advocating for beauty with a purpose and they raise funds, I will basically incorporate what the work that I'm doing in Guyana and give it that, that global platform where the issues that we, we need to address are given the international attention that it needs. And with the fundraising efforts and all of the attention that will be placed on that, I think we can be able to access a, an audience that will be able to lend their, their expertise, their knowledge, their skills that can help us as a country reduce the issues that we are, we are facing and the challenges that we have, that we 
as a, a small group might not be able to overcome all that we're trying, but in terms of getting an issue dealt with, we have, we get more work done when we come together as one and numbers make a difference. So I think with the Miss, getting the Miss World crown basically would l give me the, the full, all of the opportunities that I need to do and be an ambassador for the change that I'm being trying to deal with in my country as it relates to bullying and gender-based violence because we need that sort of global recognition and okay. attention. Let's break that down a little bit. I was trying to field some questions from our um, Guyanese diaspora okay. and I have one question that um, came in and I'd like to share this with you. Um, and this is a big supporter of yours and she's actually from Linden. Her name is Michelle Nichols. And Michelle's question was, with bullying being on the agenda of several local and national government, governments, with your own community, what are your measures you would like to see implemented and how would you use your success as a Miss World pageant to make it happen? So I guess she's relating it to um, you coming from Linden. Yes, definitely. You know, and, and she's a big supporter um, and she's also from Linden. She, she wanted me to ask you that question. It's a matter of building a network with youth groups. I've already started having conversations with the regional council, the regional chairman in Linden, Mr. Sharma Solomon, and we've been trying to locate a building where we can have persons that are affected with the issue of both bullying and gender-based violence come in to seek help whether it's in the form of counseling, whether it's the form of a, a group therapy session, or they just want information on how they can go about or move from this step to the next step. So we're trying to find a building where we can have these issues dealt with, because in the cases of bullying or gender-based violence, as much as we have the awareness and as much as we're educated about the steps that we can take and as much as we're telling persons that they need to speak out and come out and so that the issues can be dealt with, at the end of the day, they, if, if there is nowhere to go, then they might, be, they might have some misgivings, they may have some apprehensions towards coming out and saying, well, this is my problem. So we're, we're basically trying to set up an, a, a place where they can go and feel safe, so to speak, as let's call it a sanctuary, basically. So aside from your work with CADVA, you, you mentioned, I think you said something earlier about um, your, the foundation that you were setting up. So The Hope Phoenix. The Hope Phoenix. Yes. So you're trying to use the Hope Phoenix to also address some of the issues in Linden, which is your yes, hometown? Yes, basically. Because, I mean, that, those are the people that would have molded me into the person that I am today, and the, only, the least I can do is try to give something back to them. And if you can't deal with an issue from home, then that, I believe that's the first place you need to target. You need to target the people that are closest to you and home is where I'm going to take it first before I decide to expand. CADVA gives me that, that, that global, that Caribbean network and both in the United States, in the Caribbean and in Guyana. So I'm thankful for that. So with the experiences and the lessons and all of the education that I'm getting from the CADVA organization, I'm going to use those experiences, those, that information and try to mold it into the framework that I'm trying to build with Hope Phoenix and move from there, basically. Um, now, Rakaya, one of the things that I want to bring up um, with you, we know that social media with Facebook and so on has changed so much um, for even pageantry because you've seen all the blogs um, that have been um, being posted on Facebook and, and social media. And, and also what I've seen is that um, it, looks at, it looks like you're coming in pretty high in the top 10, which is a great thing for, for yourself and for Guyana. But one of the things that in advocating for you as well, um, uh, I was trying to push something out on Facebook talking about um, uh, if Rakaya Boyer won the pageant, that this would put Guyana on the map. And that's, that was how I actually phrased it um, and giving a voice for our youth. Now, uh, a person on one of the blog sites indicated, and this was what, how she, and, and tell me how, because um, I want to post this to you, um, how you see this to this question. When I said um, you winning this pageant would put Guyana on the map because obviously the closest, as you indicated earlier, was um, Shakira Baksh who came in third place. Having a winner like um, they talk about the cricket, bringing home the crown, um, the, the, the trophy or whatnot. Uh, so now here was what she posted. Um, she said, does Guyana need a crown presented by a woman's beauty to be on the map? 
So with my phrase saying that you winning would kind of put Guyana on the map because it would mean that we would win. So what does that mean to you? Um, so let me re say that question again. Does Guyana need a crown represented by a woman's beauty to be on the map? So obviously she's looking at, at a women's, woman's beauty. So can you, you answer the, that? Yes, definitely. You see, the thing is, and I'm going to take this in phases. Okay. The thing is, uh, beauty is, is, everyone has a different perception of what beauty is. And when you say if Guyana is going to be represented by a crown with beauty, it's how you see that beauty. It's not necessarily, she may be looking at it from a physical perspective, but you have to look at it skin deep. It's way deeper than just on the outside. And the Miss World pageant, like I mentioned before, isn't about what you look like. It's about, it's a combination of things because the Miss World pageant has so many segments that are in it that at the end of the day and at the end of this entire experience, you're going to be such a, such a grounded individual. You have sports fitness, you have talent, you have your beauty with a purpose. Yes, there is going to be the runway and the, in, and the uh, the the swimmer, but the swimmer, even the swimwear, just goes to show we won't be having a swimwear segment. We'll be having, uh, we'll be, have to wear sarongs to cover up because we have to respect the Indonesian culture this year where the pageant is being held. So at the end of the day, whoever wins that crown, she will be a representative of much more than just what's on the outside and that's the kind of that's that's the kind of queen and the kind of representation you want for your country you want to align yourself align your country with someone who's purposeful so miss world isn't just about what you wear it's about it's it's about how you carry yourself, how you, how the heart that you have, how you feel about the world, the change you want to see, you doing something about that change, you being a voice for unheard voices in different places in the world. So as a country, I think Guyana would want that kind of recognition. And like you mentioned, we had cricket recently where we had the Guyana Amazon Warriors. I was on Facebook and I saw the heart and the love and the pride that Guyanese were having both locally and internationally. Everyone was tied to the front of their televisions hoping that we won that, that CPL tournament. We got second, but we were still happy and we were still proud and like, like uh, the cricket, with South Africa there was the football, there was the World Cup and South Africa won it. And for all the indifferences that the country may have had at that point, when the victory came, everyone was just united and that lasted and that helped build the country and bring the country closer together. And strangely enough, victories, international victories, whether it's local or international ones, a representation from Guyana goes out and represents and they bring back something of glory, some, let's say a crown and a title, it's a glory for all in the country and the the, the, the joy and the pride and the happiness that you get in that one moment, that is something that I'm working towards. That is something that I want to see. I want to see that hope restored to our people because, I mean, Shakira Bash did amazing and she did great, but that was a while ago. So we need something in the 21st century that we can be proud of in the world of pageantry. And hope is not lost. I think what happened is that because Guyana hasn't really been placing in international pageants that persons have probably lost an interest, but they need to, uh, I think it's probably because we, we haven't been alerting and we haven't been really finding what pageantry is and allowing them to understand the dynamics of pageantry. And as a result, they may have lost hope or lost any sort of interest in pageantry. But I'm here to tell you that pageantry is much more than just walking in a swimwear or smiling and looking pretty on stage. There's a lot of effort and work that our queens go, go into and invest in. And that work at the end of the day, once once we're successful and we win it all, we're all going to celebrate in the glory of that and we're going to move together as a nation because it's Guyana at the Thank end of the day. You. Thank you, Rakaya. So as we're beginning to wrap up, I have one last question for you and that question is, um, and thank you for answering that in the way that you did, because I'm hoping that as we started off, that your message here today will begin to change the mindset of many people in our Caribbean community when they look at pageantry and support you on this platform as you um, head to Indonesia to represent Guyana. Now, here's the question. Um, what is your message for all our Guyanese community globally? Because we have Guyanese living in the United States, Guyana, Trinidad, um, Canada, um, the UK and around the globe. So 
as I said earlier, many people are following you on Facebook and social media. So your message, what is your message today to um, our Guyanese globally, especially our young Guyanese um, girls or young women who might be aspiring for the same goal to be Miss World Guyana like you? So maybe for next year we might have somebody. So what can you, um, what message would you like to give our viewers? Okay, well for the young girls, I'll begin with them. Anything is possible once you put your mind to it. You just have to dream it and fill yourself with that sort of inspiration and aspire to it, mold it, perceive it, and believe it, and you will achieve it. But don't just say, you know, with I believe it and I have faith. You have to put in the work and the time and work over time to ensure that you meet your goals and believe it. Once you believe in yourself and you build the strength within yourself and you have a good connection with Almighty God, then anything is possible. You just put in the work, create a vision board for yourself, and anything will be possible. So don't give up on your dreams. For our Guyanese community, I am your Miss Guyana, but I see this as a collective effort. Us bringing home, me bringing home the Miss World title is a collaborative effort, so I endeavor to ask for your assistance in me, having me do so. And you can do so by uh, being interactive with me on Facebook. There's a Facebook page, it's Miss World Guyana. You hit like on that page and you def you're automatically connected to me and I'll be uh, updating while I'm in Indonesia from that page. I really believe that our country has what it takes to land the international title this year. So if you believe it too and you want it as much as I do, then I would, uh, I would ask you nicely to be my guest and like the Facebook page and we can stay in touch. I think we can do it and with your help I'll do my best and I hope my best is enough. It should be, <laughs> right? So, um, and I must say that Ghana, it's a bit last minute, but Ghana, I just love that country. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't love my country and I see every single person in Ghana irrespective of where they came from, irrespective of ethnicity, religious background, as my brothers and sisters, my mom, my dad, it doesn't matter. So I feel connected to you. So if you're looking at this right now, do uh, vote for me, do get involved with my Facebook fan page, and you can reach out to me any which way you like. I'll definitely respond to those questions that you may have in the future. Thank you for everything, and thank you for your support. And um, as we... As we come to a close now, um, thank you so much, Rakaya. This was a fantastic piece. And I can definitely see this segment going out to um, bring more of our uh, community in, even those who are not in our community, um, to support you on this. And as you indicated, um, looking at uh, um, Miss World, Miss World Guyana 2013 Facebook page, uh, go on to that and like that page uh, to follow Rakaya. She's getting ready to leave for Indonesia on Sunday. Um, so, and one of our favorite quotes is, love the life you live, live the life you love. So on that note, let's support her and uh, let Guyana bring home that crown.